Hi, I'm C.S. Wally and welcome to my second video in my creative writing course. Uh, we're focusing at the moment on writing characters and this is what I'm calling video 1A in the creative writing series, Is Your Character Human? In the previous video, we put together a list of questions that you can ask yourself when you're creating your character. These questions help you to really form your character into a believable being on paper. However, there was so much information to go through in the video, I was giving you a brief outline of everything. So the following videos, we're all going to break down little elements of it bit by bit. Again, we're sticking to the kind of 10, 15 minute rule on the video. So yes, I'll move quickly, but feel free to pause. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. So for this session, you're going to need a pencil and paper or a pen and paper, whichever you feel more comfortable writing with or whatever you have to hand. I really do recommend a notebook if you have one, just because then you can keep all your notes together and things don't get lost. So what we started doing in the videos that we looked at previously was a technique called hot seating. Now this is something that you can use for any characters throughout your writing, whatever you're writing. It's also a technique that people use when they're acting as well. So it really does help you to get to know a character. The reason it's called hot seating is that we're basically putting a character in the hot seat and bombarding them with lots and lots of questions to find out everything we can about them. Now, when you're writing a character, it's not like you're hot seating a real person. You know, they're not going to necessarily talk back to you, but you can think like that character and write down their answers. You can also think, how would my character answer these questions? The more questions you can answer and the more depth you can give to those answers, the more real that character is going to be when you do write them. So when we take a look at the questions in video one, that's not a comprehensive list by any means, but all of them on that list start to make the character feel more real. The things that you might ask someone when you're getting to know them. You know, this is the way to think about what we're doing is you're getting to know somebody. So when you are expanding this list into your own questions, think about the questions you would ask that you'd want to know about a new friend or somebody you work with or someone you go to school with. Um, but as I said before, there's a lot to go through in each question, which is why this one is going to focus purely on the first question, is your character human? Answering this question is probably one of the most important and overlooked elements of creating a character. The reason for this is that it's really the foundation of everything you're going to build your character on. And the elements of your character will change depending on whether they're human or not. Whether they have trouble expressing emotion generally is not going to be part of a human character. Yes, in some cases it is, it is but on the whole, that tends to be things like androids and robots and animals expressing emotions differently. So immediately you can see that there is a really good reason for answering this question first. I gave some examples in the first video of different types of things that your character can be if they aren't human. But even if your character is human, there's lots of other questions to answer that are directly linked to them as a human, because as you know, being human, or humans are different. Everybody is different in their own ways, so any character you're creating, whether they're human or not, is going to have different things about them that you need to discover when you're writing them. What we're going to start with is, yes, my character's human. And a little bit later on, I'm going to do, no, my character isn't human. So listen to both. If you're not sure, we're also going to cover that a little bit. So yes, my character is human. So one of the things that you can do if you're really struggling to write a character, even if you are using hot seating, is to base the characters on people that you know. Now, this is a really, really easy way to get the basics of a character's personality down. However, don't just try and write exactly who that person is, because that can often upset people and you can end up insulting them. However, these characteristics can be really, really helpful in helping you think about characters. It's also really useful if you talk to different people about what they expect from certain characters. So if you know you have a hero in your story, you could ask your friends, your parents, 
other members of your family teachers what they would expect a hero to be like what kind of elements that, that their personality should have if you've got a villain again you can do the same thing so there's lots and lots of ways of approaching writing the character using hot seating it doesn't just have to be you sat with a staring at a piece of paper all day uh, characters that we can create are there to capture your reader's attention they're there to really engage people as they're reading so the more and more detail you can put into a character the better you'll know that you've written a really good character when people are crying with your character laughing at things that they do and really identifying with them like if you ever read a book and thought actually this character is just like me that's exactly what you're going for when you're writing now this can take a long long time to get right so if you do it first time and you're not happy with it don't worry you can do it again and again and again and it will get better every time you do it it's not going to be perfect first time nobody ever writes perfectly first time so don't worry about it um, this is what we like to call a work in progress because you're going to keep adding and changing things um, when it comes to good, good characters equally you don't necessarily want people to have a good reaction to them if they're a bad character you might want people to react negatively to them um, one of my proofreaders has a really big problem with peter in the children of reba series she absolutely hates him Every single time I talk to her, she asks me whether I have killed Peter yet. That's how much she doesn't like the character. It's not how I've written it that makes it unreal to her. She just doesn't like the individual in the books. Uh, equally, I've once had one of my uh, Chronicles of Kellermore books thrown at me by someone who was reading it because they thought I'd killed off their favourite character. So people really do invest in their char in characters in books. So when you are writing, keep this in mind. Now we're going to move on to no my character is not human now this might sound like it's a lot more fun than writing a human character but it can also be a lot harder so if you know your character isn't human you probably know or have a good idea of what it is if you don't that's okay as well writing is as much about researching and discovering things as it is about just making things up on the spot um when you're researching for a book or a story that you're writing, you can look at other stories and other books that have been written in a similar way. Now, you never copy word for word or take things out of these stories exactly as they happen because that's called plagiarism and that's wrong. But what you can do is look at how somebody has done some certain aspects in their story. So look at, oh, they've created dragons and those dragons talk and they have their own society. That's a really good idea. I'm going to do something by having dragons who can talk, but they live in a very different way. So you've got an idea from something somebody else has done, but you're changing it to make it your own. Another really good thing you can do is to what we call what? What I would call brainstorming, but I'm aware it's not called that anymore. I don't quite know. But basically you write down in the center of a piece of paper a word or a character idea and then you scribble all around the outside all the different things you think could actually be part of that and then when you're done you look at that and you take what you like off that piece of paper you don't have to keep all of it you can scrap certain things as really bad ideas but it's really useful sometimes just to get ideas down on paper and to be able just to look at them later so when we look at characters that aren't human the type of story that you're writing is really important because that will influence the type of non-human characters that you might have you're not necessarily going to have a dragon flying around a story and set in space however you might be looking at creating an alien race that's completely different to anything we know for a space story equally if you're writing a fantasy story you're unlikely to have aliens from another planet invading the earth the two don't mix very well in the genres so another thing you can do if you're not sure about what kind of character you want to create but you know it's not going to be human is you can write down on the piece of paper again the type of story that you want to write and around it write all the different possible creatures machines whatever that it could be this is 
a really easy way of actually laying out and going, well, there's more than I thought. Wow, I could have all these different characters in there, all these different races. Well, my story is going to be a lot bigger than I thought. That might have happened to me before. So there are a few things you should also keep in mind whilst you're writing a non-human character when you know what they're going to be, is that they still need to have things that people can relate to. If you make the characters too different from people and too different from what people expect, they're not going to be able to understand the characters very well and they're going to have a real problem and real trouble with getting through your story. So one of the easiest ways to deal with this is writing in personality traits to them. If you've ever watched Star Trek, you have the android Commander Data. Uh, now, Commander Data is an android, but he has different personality quirks that are, are his own. He's not human. He looks human and he wants to be human, but there's different things about him that make him very different from humans, but you can still relate to him as a character. He still has his own hopes and ambitions and dreams. So if you look at Toothless in How to Train Your Dragon, again, he's not human, but he has his own characteristics that you can relate to. Um, they're more like characteristics that you'd see in a pet, but they are definitely things that you can imagine in an animal and that would make that animal even though it's a mythical creature as a dragon more real um, all these things really do help your readers to connect with your characters okay well that's all for now i know that i went through a lot again very very quickly but you can watch the video over again you can make notes and if you have any questions please feel free to contact me you can you can do so through the mightier than the sword uk website and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So stay safe until my next video and have fun writing.